Web applications often use some sort of input filters as a defensive layer against SSRF attacks. One of the anti-SSRF defenses is the blacklist input filter. During this video, we see how an attacker can find the payload to bypass the blacklist input filters and exploit SSRF vulnerability. For the purpose of this video, we use an SSRF lab from Web Security Academy and you can find the link to this lab in the video description. To solve this lab, we need to bypass the application blacklist input filter in order to get access to the admin panel, then delete user callers. Let's get started by clicking on access the lab. We are now in the home page of the application and as we see it has a list of products. Let's choose one of these products and click on view details. In the product page we see the product description along with the check stock function, which allows the application users to check if the product is available in a particular store. Make sure the burp intercept is on and then choose a city from drop down menu and click on check stock. In burp we see the HTTP post request for check stock function. We we'll right click on the request and choose send to repeater. We turn off the burp intercept and go to the burp repeater. Looking at the HTTP post request in burp repeater, we notice a parameter in request body called stock API and its value is a URL to an internal system to check the number of available items. Based on the lab description, we already know the application is using blacklist input filter to prevent SSRF attacks. In the blacklist input validation approach, the application defines a list which contains the known bad inputs, and whenever it receives user's data, the application checks the received data against that list, and if it finds the exact match, then the application would refuse to process the received data and deny providing access to the requested resources. In the case of SSRF attacks, the web applications normally block inputs that contains host names that refers to the local machine, including 127.0.0.1 IP address and local host, and also the sensitive directories such as admin directories. Since the application is using the blacklist input validation, we need to do some experiment to see what inputs are in the block list of the application so we can come up with a suitable payload to bypass the application blacklist filter and deliver the SSRF attack and get access to the admin panel. For the first step, we don't make any changes to the HTTP request and we'll send the request as it is to the server by clicking on send from the top left corner of the screen. In the response tab, we see the request was completed by the server and has returned the number of available items. Now let's remove the stock API value and replace it with HTTP 127.0.0.1 which is the IP address for the loopback network interface for accessing the local host and send this request. In the response tab we get an error message indicating the provided input is in the block list of the application therefore the application refused to complete this request. For the second attempt, we replace the stock API value with localhost domain name, then send the request. As we see in the response tab, the application refused to complete this request and returned the same error message. So both attempts to make HTTP requests to the local server using the IP address and localhost domain name has failed. Therefore, we know both of these inputs are in the application block list. Now let's see what happens if we change only one letter of the localhost domain name to uppercase. I choose the first letter and change it to capital L, then send the request. This time we get 200 HTTP response code and the application server returned the contents of home page. By inspecting the HTML within the HTTP response, we can see the URL to the administrator panel. So we found a suitable payload to successfully bypass the application blacklist input filter by changing the case of only one letter of the localhost domain name to uppercase. For the next step, we need to access the admin panel. We go back to the request tab and this time we add the slash admin at the end of stock API value to see if we can access the admin panel. Let's go ahead and send this request. The application response returns an error, 
so our payload contains input that is in the application block list. We know this is related to the admin URL input as we have already managed to bypass the anti-SSRF defense against the hostname. So we go back to the repeater and this time change the first letter of admin URL to uppercase, then send the request. This time the application completes the request and provides access to the admin panel. By inspecting the HTML in the HTTP response, we can find the URL to delete user callers. Let's copy this URL so we can use it in the next step. Let's recap how we managed to bypass the application blacklist input filter. In the first step, we try to make an HTTP request to the application server from the loopback network interface using 127001 IP address and the local host domain name. And in both cases, the application returned an error message, indicating both of these host names were in the application block list. Then we changed the first letter of the host name to uppercase, and we saw the application return the content of the application homepage. For the next step, we attempt to access the admin panel and notice that the slash admin input was in the application block list. However, when we changed the first letter of the admin URL to uppercase, we saw the application return the contents of admin panel. Therefore, we were able to bypass the blacklist input filter by only changing the case of one letter to uppercase for both the hostname and the admin URL. You should know that this is not the only payload and there are several alternative payloads that can be used to bypass the input filter in this application. Now that we have the suitable payload to access the admin panel, let's go back to the web browser. Be sure the burp intercept is on and from the drop down menu choose a city, then click on check stock. In burp we go to the stock API parameter value and replace it with the payload that we use to bypass the application input filter to request access to the admin panel. Then we forward the request. Looking at the bottom of the page, we see the admin panel and also the list of users. The next step is to delete user callers. Once again, choose a city from the drop down menu and click on check stock. This time in Burp, we replace the stock API value with the URL to delete user callers. Be sure the first letter of localhost domain name and the admin URL are uppercase, then forward the request. In the browser, we see the message that we have solved the lab. Let's access the admin panel one more time to check if the user callers is deleted. In the browser, we click on check stock and in the burp, we replace the stock API value with the admin panel URL and forward the request. Looking at the admin panel at the bottom of the page, we see the user callers is successfully deleted. In this lab, we saw how to bypass blacklist input filter to exploit SSRF and access the admin panel, then delete a user. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a like and also be sure to subscribe to the channel as I upload new videos every week. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next videos.